Hello, listeners. It's Amy Dietz Graham with the Timeless Wealth Podcast. Welcome to our next episode. Today, Sean and Jalal will be joining me shortly. We're going to be talking about all about the income, how great companies uh, financially reward uh, long-term shareholders through dividends, share repurchases, and paying down debt. So we're going to talk about that next. But first, put on my disclaimer hat. As we'll be mentioning specific companies for illustrative purposes only, we are not recommending securities or sectors mentioned as they are not suitable for all investors. So please consult with your wealth advisor to verify whether these sectors or securities are suitable for your investor profile, and as well as to obtain complete information, including the main risk factors of those sectors or securities. Also note that past performance is not a guarantee of future performance. So coming up next, Sean and Jalal will be joining to talk all about the income. Welcome back, everybody. Joining me is Sean and Jalal. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Amy. Thank you. <laughs> Looking forward to today's topic, all about the income. So we're going to touch on dividends. But before we come there, let's talk about where do businesses, where does the profit come from? Well, if we start from the very beginning, let's say you're a business and you're producing a good or service. And let's say you're able to sell that good for a dollar. Let's say it costs you 80 cents to make it. Well, what's left over after you pay your costs, you get a dollar of revenue, you pay your 80 cents in costs, is called your profit, that 20 cents. That's mm -hmm. your profit. And ultimately, there's only five things you can do with a profit. One, you can retain it. You put it into retained earnings. That's effectively a savings escrow for a company. Mm -hmm. You can use it later on to do different things with it, but you're not using it today. You're not going to use it right now. The second thing you can do is you can actually reinvest it in the business. So what that would mean is let's say you have an alternative within your business. You'd like to double down on something you're really good at because you expect you're going to get a great rate of return doing it. You can definitely do that. And a lot of companies like Amazon and Alphabet do just that. They reinvest in their business because they have such fast growing technologies. They can't feed it enough cash which to generate is, their return. Which is a good return. point, right? They're not, those ones typically aren't having a dividend because they're, they're reinvesting into the business with all the different things they're working on. Yeah. And, and, and actually, to be, to be fair, Steve Jobs famously did not like declaring dividends because he felt the opportunities within the products he was right. creating were far better than anything we could spend their money, our, our money on our, themselves if we got it from ourselves or right. from the company. The third thing you can do is you can dividend it out. That means you take part of your profit. It could be 10% of your profit, 30% of your profit, or whatever number you choose, and you can give it to the shareholders. You can give it to yourself to spend on anything you choose. The fourth thing you can do is you can pay down debt, which is going to become more and more important as time goes on mm -hmm. because interest rates have increased. Wasn't a big as big of a deal in the past 10 right. years because interest rates are so, so low, low. Mm -hmm. but it's becoming more and more prominent because of where we find ourselves regarding interest rates. And the last thing you can do is you can repurchase your own shares. And what that means is picture yourself, you have a pie, a pie shell. You're going to shrink the size of the pie shell, but the amount of profit filling you're going to put in is still the same or growing. That means the amount of, pie, of filling you get per slice of pie increases. That's effectively what happens. And those are the five main things you can do with profit. Right, right. So what we're going to touch on is what does that activity look like for a select few group of companies over the long term. And I thought what we'd do is start with a Canadian example, mm -hmm. an easy one, yeah. which is Toronto Dominion Bank. Right. So we're going to share on the screen. So those of you that are joining us on our YouTube, you'll be able to see this, but we'll describe it here. The blue line is the price return. So we're all watching that right now, right? So the prices are going up and down, and it's this usually very jagged and, and you know, fluttering. Uh, uh, this, this is the share price, the right? The share price. You got it. You got it. But underneath, you'll see we overlaid the under the company in the gray metric is the earnings per share. Okay. And so, and then underneath that in the green, you'll see the dividend. And this goes back, this chart we're showing you is from, it goes back to uh, 1999. But it's interesting if you actually plot the gray bars, the earnings per share and the dividends, it's a much smoother mm -hmm. Right. And this is what a business owner is looking at when when they're trying to figure out which buckets uh, to, to do with their, the profits. It's a much smoother, you know, ride instead of looking at the day to day price return. Well, that's true. And, and if you look at this chart, you see a gradual rise in earnings per share of the gray bar. Mm -hmm. It's 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 not 
super smooth, but it's smooth, smooth. relative yeah. to the day or month to month uh, change in price of the shares. Mm-hmm. The dividend activity is a steady, gradual, yeah. upward motion. Yeah, it is. It is like clockwork. Yeah. And so, what does that mean for someone that's, let's say, owned TD Bank as a business for the last twenty years? You've owned it. You've done nothing. You've just sat there, collected your dividends, and been a shareholder for this for this uh, company for the last twenty years. What you've experienced was when you bought the shares, let's say in December two thousand two. Well, you would have gotten twenty one cents per share in dividends, which would have represented a dividend yield of three point nine five percent, which it's not too bad. Uh, today, if you own them right now, your dividend is roughly two dollars and seventy one cents a share, representing a dividend yield of four point four six percent. This is where the power comes in. Over that span of roughly 20 years, just under 20 years, your dividend growth in aggregate has just been under 1,200%. And your share price growth is around Mm 1,050%. So can you imagine, you know, if you could actually just take TD and become the sole owner of it, we'd all love that, wouldn't we? You're the sole (laughs) owner of TD. And all you need to do, you don't need to manage it. You don't even need to set, set the uh, strategic direction of TD. Don't be on the board of directors. You just basically collect income. Well, this year, what would have happened is your board of directors would have announced a share repurchase program of $4.5 billion, which essentially means TD is taking roughly 3% of the value of the company off the table for you. Plus, you're collecting a 4.4% dividend, mm-hmm. right? So your overall yield on your efforts, which is nothing because you're not managing, you're not working on the strategic direction of the company is around 7% per year Mm -hmm. just to sit and do nothing. And then over time, your share price is going to appreciate on average around seven to eight percent a year compound. Yeah, that's actually, been your experience f- with TD. Fun fact: TD has actually been paying their dividend since 1857. Yeah, and actually, that's before I was born. <laughs> yeah, it was before me too. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, Sean was that before you were born or a little <laughs> after? Me. But, you know, actually Canadian banks and a lot of clients, when you meet, you know, a lot of our older clients, they're very familiar with the Canadian banks have, have a long track record. Mm-hmm. You know, BMO Bank of Montreal has been paying since 1829. Bank of Nova Scotia, 1832. CIBC, 1868. RBC, 1870. Mm-hmm. This is a long, long track record of, you know, growing their dividend. So here's a quick trick question. That's a very long time. Yeah. Yeah, it is, isn't it? A century, <laughs> over a century. Honestly, it is. Um, are they the only Canadian companies that actually pay dividends and increase <laughs> dividends over time? No. I'm going to take a wild guess. Oh, okay. She yeah. gave the answer. <laughs> Not a trick question. The same can be said for Canadian National Railway. Absolutely. If you've owned, like, and Canadian National Railway is a very stodgy transportation company. Um if we wanted to recreate a North American railroad, there's not enough money in the world to do it because you have to buy the land, build the tracks, get the you know get the trains, and then mm-hmm. yeah. all the stuff that's required to build a railway. It's an oligopolistic business if there ever was one. Right. And if you look at Canadian National Railway, the 20 year dividend growth rate on CNR has been 14.4 percent per year compound. Mm-hmm. Sorry, what was the 14.4 percent? Their dividend you? growth rate since 2000, and now. You know what happened this year. Now this year, tough year. Uh, you know we're we're recording this uh, around mid October. Markets have been bad this year. Share prices reflect that. But the dividend activity of great companies hasn't changed one mm-hmm. bit. Uh, Canadian National Railway increased their dividend eighteen percent this year, while they were basically reiterating that their business is doing just fine mm-hmm. and that they feel strong about their prospects in the future. Oh, and another thing they're doing is they're taking. They're buying back at a record pace, by the way. This is not me saying that. This is them saying this. They're buying back $5 billion of their shares, Mm -hmm. which really represents taking almost 5% of the value of the company off the table, shrinking the size of the pie. Mm -hmm. But the filling in the pie is still growing. Mm -hmm. It's actually going to grow. Now, companies don't grow their shareholders or grow the dividend every single year. There are situations where times get tough and they have to make that business decision that they Mm -hmm. can't do it. A good example was 2008. Now, the banks didn't raise their dividend, but they also didn't cut their dividend Mm -hmm. because a dividend is not a guarantee. It's, you know, to Sean's point, it's coming out of the business profits. And so they have to make a business decision. So 2008, as of the example, not a single Canadian bank cut their dividend, but they didn't grow it in that environment because it was a pretty tough financial crisis that we were going through. Mm-hmm. Right. 
Well, now what do, you know when a, when a company increases its dividend? Like mm-hmm. I'll give you an example. Microsoft earlier in, in September, I think it was September twenty second, announced a ten percent increase in their dividend. What does that signal to an investor or to the investing community? That's what I wanted to ask you. I wanted to ask you, what is it a reflection of? What do you think, Amy? Well, it's to show that they're, they're confident because I think a lot of companies, you have to be very confident that you can sustain that payment because what you don't want to do is have to cut your dividend. And, and you do see that from time to time, but that would signal to an investor that maybe you miscalculated, maybe you haven't judged things properly, or maybe there's tough times ahead. And that can cause nervous, you know, shareholders. So mm-hmm. if they're coming out and saying, we're confident that we can commit to pay to you, that must give us some confidence to say they've looked at these numbers, they can they can withstand this, they've thought this through, and they've got enough cash on hand to, to maintain it. And that's exactly what Argus Research said about that move on September 22nd. Just one more sign of management confidence in these uncertain times. Mm-hmm. And that's important, yeah. right? You're signaling that, you know, when you back it up a step, Microsoft, just to use them as an example, mm-hmm. a random, it's, it's quite a random one. You can go on and on with different companies are doing this, but seventy yep. percent of Microsoft is owned institutionally. So that means pension plans all around the world, endowments, and so forth. Yep. They own this company. It's a bedrock of, of basically providing their annuitants income for the rest of their lives. If the people that are in retirement, you need to be able to signal to them during these times that your business is not in trouble and Microsoft's business is indeed not in trouble, mm-hmm. and they're singing from the rooftops that they're going to be just fine. Now. Why is Microsoft's business not in trouble? Well, we all know what Microsoft does on a day-to-day basis. If you're logged into a computer listening to this, the odds are it's either a Microsoft operating system or Apple operating system that you're using. But they're also into cloud computing. They're also into video game gaming and so forth. But here's the one thing you get when you own Microsoft. Microsoft is expected to grow their earnings somewhere in the neighborhood of 12% per year over the next five years. That's almost 100% or doubling of their earnings during that span of time. Their dividend growth is expected to be 12% per year as time goes on. But here's the thing. Microsoft, remember, there's only five things you can do with profit. And you can't spend a dollar twice. You pay If, if you pay profit out in a dividend, mm-hmm. you can't then repay it out and reinvest it into the business. Well, that's what is called a payout ratio. The dividend payout ratio is that percentage of your profit that you give back to your shareholders. Mm-hmm. Higher it is. It can be more dangerous because you you might not have money to fund necessities within your business. The lower it is, the better. Mm -hmm. Well, Microsoft pays out just under just over 25 percent of their earnings in dividends, leaving the remaining 75 percent of their earnings to be invested into the Mm -hmm. business, share repurchase plans, pay down debt and so forth. And the return on equity, by the way, which is basically the return they get on the assets they have in the business, 46 percent. Right. They make 46% per year on the equity they have in the business. So that's not too bad to own this business. Mm -hmm. Now, this year, if you start, if you bought Microsoft on January 1 this year, being 2022, uh, today's October 19th, you'd be down somewhere around 30% Mm -hmm. today. However, Ricky Gervais jokingly said, you know, if you found a time machine, you wouldn't journey back to, you know, save the world. You journey back to backdate your purchase of Microsoft going back to 2000. <laughs> because it's true. You'd, you'd be very no, happy with the results over well. time. That is so true. Even if you backdate it 10 years or five years, you've done very, very well yeah. owning this company. Well, and it's important to mention this too, because some people will fall into the dividend trap where they look for companies that pay really, really high dividends. And sometimes that's not a good thing, right? Sometimes it's a way to attract investors to come into your, you know, your company, but it might not be sustainable. Mm-hmm. So don't get trapped by you looking at just the percentage on the dividend. It's it's looking at the track record. Yep. Um, and again, fun fact, uh, as we were looking up some of these, we found some names of some companies that have been, you, you'll recognize most of the names here, um, that s- consecutive dividend increases year over year. So Coca-Cola, as an example, 60 years in a row of a dividend increase, right? Colgate, well, Warren Bu- Warren, one of Warren Buffett's favorite, favorite yeah, holdings. Yeah, one of his favorites. Colgate Palmolive, 60 years. Um, Johnson & Johnson, 60 consecutive years. Emerson, Sorry, these are consecutive years of increasing, increasing their dividends? Increasing their dividends. Through, 60 years. Through every, thick and thin. Every thick year, thin. year on year, yep. they're increasing. Yep. Em- Emerson Electric. Um, so you'll you'll know those guys from like HVAC gears, uh, oil refiners, chemicals. Oh, yeah, uh, they're, they're in all sorts of business, yeah. right? 66 years in a row. 
Procter and Gamble, 66 years. National Bank, you know, our home here, 12 consecutive years as of right now. The only bank to do that. Yeah. yeah. So it's pretty neat to go back and look at the track record. Again, they, they, they're they obviously the management is confident in how they're navigating and rewarding their shareholders. Well, and look, and I'll, I'll you know... One of our one of our clients once said that this company reminds her of uh, of her high school calculator. But this this company jumps out at me. One of my favorite companies from just a, a management standpoint. They're just well managed. They're cost controlled, and they're very conservative in terms of how they manage their business day to day and how they allocate capital. It's Texas Instruments. Mm-hmm. And you know when you look at Texas Instruments, they produce chips that are virtually in every product you might own that has any digital interface with you, the consumer, or the internet. Like automobiles, think uh, automation technology and the manufacturing processes and so forth. Texas Instruments is involved in all these areas. Mm-hmm. And when you look at you know their dividend growth over the long run, they basically have been growing their dividend uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 15% over the last 11 years. But they've also had 22 years of consecutive dividend increases. That's pretty, pretty good, mm-hmm. too. Um, and mid-September, so just after Microsoft announced their 10% increase in dividends, Texas Instruments announced an 8% increase in dividend. Mm-hmm. But the story doesn't stop there. They added $15 billion to their share repurchase plan because of where their share, well, arguably because of where their share price is now relative to where they think it's going to be over time. So now their share purchase repurchase plan is, stands at $23 billion. This is going to be completed, expect to be completed over the next 18 months. They're buying back 17% of the company mm-hmm. right now. That's right. huge. Yeah. It, it is, right? 17%. That's For massive. a company that basically, you know, makes a bedrock item that's included in it, a lot of growth areas in the mm-hmm. economy. Now, why they're able to do that? Because let's say they make a dollar, okay, and they pay their costs and so on and so forth. 34% of their revenue. So one dollar in every three that they 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 generate mm-hmm. is free cash flow. That means unencumbered cash that they're free to do whatever they want to do to the benefit of their customers or to the benefit of their shareholders. It's enormously powerful. Mm-hmm. And again, they're expected to grow their earnings ten percent a year over the next five years. And dividend growth, if it's again, if history is any indication of the future, you're looking at around fifteen percent per year dividend growth embedded in this company. Well, let's come full circle for a moment mm-hmm. because right now we're all talking about inflation, right? Mm-hmm. Inflation yeah. being high, but as you're rhyming off the you know the historical growth rates of the dividend. Mm-hmm. Far higher in most cases, not all cases, but it's far higher than where inflation even is today as it stands right now at these, you know, kind of high levels for us. Um, Why is that so important? Well, so that's I'm glad you brought that up. Dividend growth is one of those rare income streams that historically and I'm talking over Mm -hmm. years and years and years. And we have a chart of dividend growth in the S&P 500 to prove it. Over years and years and years, dividend growth is one of those areas that has consistently outplaced the rate of inflation, regardless of the inflation inflationary environment you've been in. Mm-hmm. It's one of the onlys, only ones. You can, you know, pockets of real estate have been able to do it over time, but consistently, dividend growth, yeah. from dividend growth companies have consistently outpaced inflation. And why is that yeah. important? Because you're preserving your purchasing power within your income stream if you own these companies as time goes on. Yeah. In fact, you're increasing your purchasing power in all likelihood. And that's critical. Yeah. Now, look, when you're when you're looking to buy a great company and invest in it, we're not saying trade it, we're saying invest in it. There's many things you need to look at. Mm-hmm. You know, pricing power with your suppliers, pricing power, you know, with your customers, um, you know, pricing power with di- different things, moats around your business, threats of substitution, and so yeah. forth. There's a number of things you need to consider when you're looking to take a long term engagement in a great business. But dividend growth, or let me walk it back a step, how companies or businesses treat their shareholders is a critical component to the chances of being successful Mm -hmm. long-term in owning a business. It shows you some visibility in terms of what your experience might be like as a shareholder of this company, Mm -hmm. all other things being equal. Well, and as an investor, when you go through kind of tough times, Mm -hmm. it's something that you can actually point to in your portfolio and you look at your statement to say, okay, think, you know, these are assets that you own, but they're producing things. You see that dividend coming in. So price return is down right now. But to your point, if you have that income that's coming in, it's compounding. And in often cases, what we've gone through here today, they're growing that at a far faster rate than inflation. 
that makes me feel pretty good given, mm -hmm. you know, the other situation we're around and we're talking recession doesn't feel great, but it's something that you can point to. And again, you yep. can see and understand the businesses that you're investing in. And we all operate in the same environment. I mean, there, there's all like every business is operating in the same world stage as everyone else. And there's so many things that are beyond our control mm -hmm. day to day. Like, you know, what Putin's going to do with the war in Ukraine, I, I don't know. I, and, and my arms are too short to go in a punching match with God. I, I don't know what's going to happen. It's beyond my, <laughs> my, my capabilities. Um, businesses face these same risks too. Mm -hmm. Whether or not we're going to get a serious recession or not a serious recession, beyond their control. But what is in their control is what they do with their profit, how they allocate capital to make their businesses better mm -hmm. so that shareholders are rewarded in the long run as a result of that activity or they reward shareholders for being with them long term. The best companies actually do both. Mm -hmm. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about some c taxes because that's really important. Like how are dividends yeah, in, in point, terms Joel. of like tax, uh, in terms of even cross-border, uh, whether in Canada, whether you buy like dividend paying stocks in mm -hmm. Canada or the U.S.? So you get the benefit in Canada for a Canadian company that pays you dividends. You get the benefit of the, the dividend tax credit. So that's, you know, it's far less than what you would make on as income. You get a tax credit. The The federal government gives you a 15% tax credit. And then depending on the province in Ontario, mm -hmm. it's 10%. Uh, I believe uh, BC is 12%. So it varies. But there's an additional benefit to collecting that form of income. Mm -hmm. And how does that how does that relate or affect the long-term yield? Like, for example, if you buy... Uh, I don't know, a company that pays out a dividend, six percent dividend rate, for instance, and then with mm -hmm. the tax credit, like how does that relate to the yield? Can you guys give me some numbers there? Well, so that's a, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. and, and again, we're not accountants, so you'd have to go to your accountant to verify sure. this. Yep. But your your the, the income tax you pay on a qualified Canadian dividend is roughly uh let's say sixty percent that of what you'd pay on your income. Now mm -hmm. let's say you have two investment choices. Mm -hmm. Choice A, you can go and invest in a GIC, which currently are yielding around four and a half percent which is pretty good given yeah. what we've seen in the last yeah. little while. Yeah. But if you're at a 50% tax bracket, that 4.5% quickly becomes 2 and a quarter percent. When you factor in inflation, you're not you're not really that much ahead of the game. I mean, your money get, comes back to you, which in this environment is very comforting for some people. Yes. yes. But you're not getting a whole much but much after that. Or you can invest in a qualified dividend. Now, let's say you get 6%. Well, because you're only paying like literally one third the tax you would pay versus interest income, which is taxes if you earned it. Okay. Your interest equivalent on a 6% dividend is closer to 9%. It's so if you're getting mm -hmm. a 9% interest equivalent yield, which is on amazing, that income stream. Yeah. which is awesome. Yeah. In this market. But the caveat is, can you imagine if that income stream could grow at, let's say yeah. eight to 12% per year as time goes on? Yeah. Cause a GIC, once you lock in a GIC for one year, two year, three years or four years or five years, that income stream is never going to grow. No. Mm. They're only going to pay what they're obligated to pay you. Yeah. Which, for, for a lot of people, that's okay. Yeah. But the dividend income for these companies that we mentioned historically has grown at that 8 to 12% per year range or as time goes on. Gotcha. Go back to compounding. Go back to compounding. Yeah, just that like automatic reinvestments or the reinvestments of your dividends. Yeah. Like, that's a lot of compounding. Absolutely. I think what we're seeing too, and this is really important, is at this juncture, the, the great dividend payers in Canada, the United States, and in Europe too, there's some great dividend payers in Europe and actually mm -hmm. all around the world, they're not changing their dividend policies. They're mm -hmm. actually staying with it. And in some cases, they're accelerating it. The one thing we're seeing right now more than ever, though, is the the acceleration of share repurchase programs because companies are recognizing that their share prices are low and this is the time to take advantage of it. So they're stepping their repurchasing activity up quite, mm -hmm. quite dramatically mm -hmm. in this environment. Well, Sean, Jalal, great conversation today. Thank you, Amy. All about the income. Thanks, we're everyone. Out of time. Well, thanks for joining us again today. It was a great talk about all about the income. Um, you know, even in this environment where companies seem to be going through tough times, we're still seeing companies that are growing their dividend. But let's remember, you know, what we talked about, it's not just about a high dividend. It's also good to look at the track record and a consistent growth rate of a dividend as well. But let me put on my disclaimer hat one last time. All the companies we mentioned today were just for illustrative purposes. Uh, you know, always speak to your advisor um, to make sure that it's suitable for, for your investor profile type and to obtain um, complete information on the company's profile and making sure you understand the risk, risk factors going forward. But thanks again and tune in till next time.